This is a hotspot from Verizon. Looks like your standard hockey puck hotspot, and honestly, it kind of sucks. This is also a hotspot, and I made it. It sucks less than your standard hotspot, but isn't perfect. Let's break down this build together and see why. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode, I'm showing you my homemade hotspot. Why does a generic hotspot suck? For the same reasons why a generic router sucks. Mostly, lack of software options and difficulty of hardware maintenance. For most people, that doesn't matter. All they care about is getting connected, and these routers and hotspots do that well. But if you want more control over your devices, data, and digital life, then you're out of luck with these devices. The best way to solve these problems is to build custom solutions. Most hardware and software is available to make your own hotspot. You just need to know where to find it. If you're a follower of my channel, then you'll see how this is possible. Let's take a look at this build. The star of the show is the MCU Zone CM4 4G Plus carrier board. The board rocks two one gigabit ethernet ports, two USB 2.0 ports, one USB-C power port, one HDMI port, a SD card slot, a SIM slot, and most importantly, one mini PCIe port for our cellular modem. Speaking of, I'm using a Sierra Wireless MC7455 modem, the same one I used in my 4G Raspberry Pi video. Just to mention, they did upgrade this carrier board recently, where it now has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. You can check it out in the description. Being a carrier board, the brains of this operation are a Raspberry Pi CM4, and I chose one with Wi-Fi, two gigabytes of RAM, and no EMMC. Lastly, since it is a cellular and wireless build, I have SMA pigtail connectors for the modem and Wi-Fi, along with cellular and Wi-Fi antennas. On the topic of building your own solution, I'd like to mention today's sponsor, Exter. They're a company who set out to do the same as I do, build solutions when the status quo is not enough. For me, my bifold wallet wasn't great. It had more space than I needed for cards, pictures, and other unnecessary items you could find anywhere. What I wanted was a slimmer profile with more modern features. My bifold here is the status quo, and that's not enough. I've been in the market for a new wallet for some time, but I never found one I really liked. After Exter sent me their carbon fiber wallet, I wish I didn't wait so long. It has everything that I've been looking for. First, it has a slim profile that neatly fits in my pocket and is easy to handle. The carbon fiber metal is rigid and yet smooth to the touch. Its quick card access is perfect for me. Before, I'd fumble around trying to get the right card, but now I can simply fan them out and pick off the one I need easily. It has additional storage for cards on the back with an RFID blocker, great for protecting my card information from wireless thieves. On the front, the strap acts as a money clip, which is great for me as I'm not one to carry much cash around. Lastly, Exter also sent me their Bluetooth tracker from Chipolo. It's a solar power tracker that I can slide behind the money clip spot and use to track my wallet's location so I'll never lose it. Being a tech enthusiast, I really admire this benefit and how modern technology married with slim functional design aesthetics make for a wallet of the 21st century. To spread the holiday cheer, you can get up to 40% off extra wallets this Christmas sale when you use my discount code DEV or my link in the description below. Any purchase you make with my code or link does support my channel. And for that, you have my thanks. Assembling this build was very straightforward. Install the CM4 onto the carrier board. Install the serial wireless cellular modem into the PCIe slot. Install the antennas. Slide in the board into the case. And you're done. The only part about the assembly that wasn't so great is the antenna holes on the case. There's only two. If I wanted to use my built-in Wi-Fi, I was going to need another antenna hole. So I easily solved that by drilling out a vent hole to fit the antenna connector. Getting software to work was mostly easy too, with a couple of caveats. I used OpenWRT for this build, as one would imagine, and it recognized most of the hardware. Looking at the board, I saw the chipset for the PCIe attached Ethernet port was Realtek. And sure enough, 
It uses the same driver as my DF robot build. After I took care of that, I just needed OpenWRT to see the modem. With all the Sierra wireless and cellular drivers installed, first I checked PCIe with LSPCI and saw nothing. Checking DMessage didn't show the modem device loading up either. So that was strange. After enough trial and error, I realized that the mini PCIe port is actually connected over USB and not PCIe. I forgot that USB is not enabled by default on CM4. And after activating USB in the boot config TXT file, I saw the modem device pop up in DMessage and LSUSB. I finally could configure the modem via QMI and it worked flawlessly. So after all this, how does my hotspot stack up against the hockey puck? In the performance area, they both maintain a similar upload and download speeds over Wi-Fi. This test isn't apples to apples since they're using different modems and different antennas, but in general, they both use LTE. At least with my hotspot, I can tinker with settings for performance improvements, like carrier aggregation. That's something I actually tried on my modem, but my changes didn't seem to take effect. Aesthetics-wise, the hockey puck is the clear winner. It's ultra portable, while my hotspot is clunky in comparison. The case is thicker, and it has antennas that you need to add and remove, and you need a portable battery even to power it. Functionality-wise, this varies. The hockey puck has an easier interface to work with, both physical and web-based. You can check your battery level, cellular connection, data usage, Wi-Fi settings, all with the power button and the LCD screen here. In addition, the USB port on this hockey puck is a USB-C OTG port, so you can use it for power and for tethering to your device. In this area, my hotspot is not for the faint of heart. If you're a fan of OpenWT and Linux networking, you will feel right at home. You can use Lucy or UCI commands to configure your hotspot with a slew of networking configurations to suit your needs. However, my hotspot lacks a power button and an LCD status screen, which would be really nice to see that information front and center. The USB-C port on the hotspot is only for power and program, so you can't even use it for OTG type functions. At the same time, software enabled physical features is where my hotspot outshines the generic hotspot. It has two ethernet ports you can use for LAN or WAN connections. It has built-in Wi-Fi, but you can also attach a USB Wi-Fi adapter so that you could have two WLANs where one of them could even be a wireless WAN. You have three ways to connect to the internet with my build, while the hockey puck only offers one way. The antennas allow for better cellular and Wi-Fi connections and can be changed out for higher or lower DBI antennas. And if you want to attach storage or other USB devices, you have two USB ports to do that. In this case, my build is more than a hotspot. It's a travel router with cellular features. Taking all of this into account, it doesn't make my build perfect against the generic hotspot. There are notable improvements I'd like to make for my next build. First, I would love to integrate the battery. While I enjoy tinkering with hardware, I am not great at understanding the inner workings of a PCB. So if anyone has any guidance or suggestions, feel free to reach out. Second, better wireless. I'd love to use a 5G modem and the Wi-Fi 6 or 6E card. Third, I'd step up my game with physical buttons, with a power button for the battery, a reset button via GPIO, and a cellular on-off button or toggle switch. Fourth, I'd install a nice OLED display to show the same information you'd see on generic hotspots, like right here. And lastly, I'd like this port to be a OTG USB-C port for tethering and additional functionality. For my followers who are wondering, where's the configuration? Worry not. Most of my prior OpenWT videos cover how to configure this hotspot, from my DF robot build to my 4G Raspberry Pi build. The only part I haven't covered in a prior video is enabling USB on a CM4. Regardless, links to the videos and configurations will be in the description below. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, another content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, 
go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. What does your perfect hotspot look like? Something like this? Maybe with the improvements I talked about? Drop me a comment below and we'll chat about it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.